Hello, here's a little background on Niels Bohr, the Danish physicist and one of the founders of quantum theory um, and also the understanding of atomic structure, you know, with some similarities to how we look at it today. Um, and it was for that work that he received the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1922. He was born in Copenhagen in Denmark in 1885. His father was a professor of science, of uh, physiology. And his mother was from a quite a rich family in uh, they were a banking family uh, with some Jewish heritage, like a lot of these uh, families, the scientists were at the time um, very um, successful in the in the world of science. Um, and uh, Bohr, he he studied at the University of Copenhagen. I mean, at the time, they only had one physics professor there. Um, and uh, it it was well probably for that reason that in 1920, um, so just before he won the Nobel Prize, uh, Bohr founded the Institute of Theoretical Physics at the University of Copenhagen, which is now nay has been renamed as the Niels Bohr Institute. So he founded that there. Um, <clears throat> perhaps his I'd say his most famous contribution to science is probably the Bohr model of the atom. So this is combining Rutherford's findings. So you, you may recall that Rutherford discovered that um, the model, a uh, sort of rough model of the atom of having this small, positively charged, very dense uh, nucleus with mostly space on the outside. And it was Bohr who extended this into this idea of these shells of electrons. Um, you know, he, he combined Rutherford's findings with the work on Planck, uh, that Planck had done on quantum theory. Uh, so combining Rutherford and Planck, he then came up with these orbitals and these energy levels for electrons around the nucleus. Now, it did have its own... Um, limitations on this. It's not like he had the final answer, but it was a, a big step in the right direction. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much still the uh, the starting point for learning for, you know, we all did it you know, when we were at school. This is how you get told about the structure of an atom. And it's a good starting point for at least having some kind of visualization of what's going on, even though we've got better descriptions in the detail nowadays. Um, he also contributed in his work in quantum theory to the idea of wave particle duality. So he was one of the pioneers in that as well. Um, he, you know, he, he overlapped into chemistry, as you'd expect, if he's looking at things like this. I mean, this is classic chemistry stuff nowadays, looking at these energy levels. And he, he was predicting properties. So, I mean, one in particular was uh, what is now being called hafnium. Um, which gets its name from the, the Latin for um, the Latin name for Copenhagen. Um, and he predicted the properties of this new element that was later discovered. And of course, more recently, he's had the element, uh, the element borium uh, is named after him. This is uh, one of those uh, very heavy um, synthetic elements, you know, one of the ones that doesn't just exist in nature, but has to be created in the lab. But you know, he's now got that named after him. Um, he was also a very proficient philosopher. Um, you know, some people have, have even described him as being more of a philosopher than a scientist. He was particularly influenced by Soren Kierkegaard, who was, um, I mean, now he's generally seen as being perhaps the first existentialist philosopher. So looking at the, you know, the nature of human existence um, and uh, the human condition and, you know, what comes first? Are we, are we creating ourselves through our own choices or are we born a particular way? You know, do we have some kind of essence or from the existentialist point of view, are we more creating ourselves through our choices and decisions? And Bohr was, um, yeah, he, he was very, very much influenced by Kierkegaard. Um, there might have been a slight tension, apparently, between the two. And this is often the way with Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard was a very devout Christian. Bohr was an atheist. And um, I mean, I know from experience myself with reading Kierkegaard, he's got some 
amazing ideas and he, he's very interesting to read but sometimes it can be uh you can get attention there if you're maybe not as um religiously inclined as as Kierkegaard was um but yeah Bohr was um yeah very much a, a philosopher he was also strongly influenced by Immanuel Kant as well but you know most people are once they've read him you know Kant being one of the absolute titans of of philosophy um outside of that away from science and philosophy um Bohr was remarkable during World War Two in his uh, help for um, people trying to flee Nazi Germany and he helped numerous people fleeing from Germany into uh, Scandinavia and then on to the US and then uh, he had to flee himself in 1943 because he had got word that maybe he was going to be um, arrested by the Nazis so uh, he had to follow that same sort of escape route of going from Sweden and, and then Britain and then over to the US and to safety. Uh, so, yeah, remarkable man covering a lot of uh, different areas, you know, physics, chemistry, teaching, philosophy, uh, humanitarian work. So, um, yeah, quite the guy.